Right, so the DUP. We remember them, don't we? Arbiters of the creation and myth being fact. Homophobes. Anti-abortionists. Another version of the Tories, basically. Just even more behind the times. Little wonder they were so easily bribed by Theresa May to keep her in power for a casual £1 billion. Because, of course, there's no such thing as a magic money tree, is there? Well, this bunch have been holding Northern Ireland back for decades. They've been hell-bent on keeping Northern Ireland tied to the rest of the Union so badly that when they lost their grip on the Stormont First Ministership last year, when Sinn Féin overtook the DUP as the largest party, they had a bit of a collective aneurysm, which has led to another political hammering now. A bit of background to this is necessary, though, in order to understand how badly the DUP have asked for this. Under the power-sharing deal in Northern Ireland, the two parties have, in order to keep the peace under the Northern Ireland Protocol, entered a power-sharing deal. The largest party in the Stormont Assembly would have their leader, this First Minister, the next party, would be deputy. A power-sharing deal between two parties, and that has been the DUP first, Sinn Féin second, for quite some time. That was until last year. Sinn Féin, last March, became the largest party in the Northern Ireland, and therefore, under the terms of the power-sharing deal the roles would now be reversed. A Sinn Féin First Minister would be announced and the DUP leader would be deputy. A reversal of roles, but not one the DUP could swallow. Their egos were too big. They'd had a boot in their unionist fundamentals by a democratic swing towards nationalism. And that was all despite Sinn Féin having previously played the part of junior partners in order to run a functional Northern Ireland Assembly. They accepted democracy. They accepted the terms of the protocol. They played their part. The DUP took a match to it all instead of doing likewise. If we can't be in charge, no one will, was their attitude, as they all rocked up to Stormont to sign the role and get government underway. This allowed them to collect their salaries, you see. God forbid they don't get paid, despite their shenanigans. The most important bit for them, of course. But the DUP then abstained to prevent a speaker being elected. And without one of those being elected, nothing could change. The old speaker had to remain in place, as did at that point all the former ministers, which were, of course, the DUP's choice. Anti-democratic toys being thrown out of the pram behaviour, but it got worse. We won't sit, they cried. No legislature, no executive, no power sharing deal when one of those parties required to attend to share said power simply won't show up. They collapsed the power sharing agreement. Stormont locked its doors. Northern Ireland's devolved assembly couldn't sit and has not sat ever since. During this time, the DUP demanded changes to the Northern Ireland Protocol to suit themselves, of course, bed the rules back in their own favour, a bit like the Tories rigging boundaries and introducing voter ID to all intents and purposes. Similar sort of thinking. Democracy be damned, they feel offended. How dare people vote them out? Who do these Northern Irish people think they are? Sinn Féin weren't the only party demanding the DUP grow up over this either. Other smaller parties got involved, even the non-sectarian ones, neither unionists nor nationalists like the Alliance Party, the third biggest party in Northern Ireland, who said the DUP should not be allowed to collect their salaries because of this. Fat chance of that. We're locking the doors, we're collapsing everything unless we get what we want, the DUP told Boris Johnson, who couldn't whiff whap his way out of this one. Carrie Antoinette needed to fall pregnant quick and get the heat off him for a bit. Of course, he then went. Truss, well, at least said of her on Northern Ireland, the better, really. She was all set to collapse the Good Friday Agreement in order to completely rewrite the Northern Ireland Protocol. The DUP loved her for this. They hated the Protocol. Johnson's doing. It left Northern Ireland de facto in the EU and left them, the DUP, wailing about being treated differently from the rest of the UK. But of course, none of that came to pass either, as she then went as well. Then in comes Rishi Sunak, and in probably the only actual achievement to his name to date... He negotiated the Windsor Framework Agreement, sorted out trade to Northern Ireland and the EU via his green lanes and his red lanes, cutting down on red tape, reducing checks, opening up the ability to trade in previous banned items. Rather than Northern Ireland being left in the EU, it became more Schrodinger's Island, both in the EU and not. Now, where Sunak caught the DUP off guard, though, was his negotiation of what got called the Stormont Break. This gave new powers to the Stormont Assembly, which still wasn't sitting, of course. And this gave that assembly, regardless of that, the power to override EU legislation they didn't like, albeit in very specific circumstances. I went into this in another video. I won't rehash it here. I'll link to it. But functionally, this gave the Northern Irish Assembly the power to veto EU legislation that would affect not just them, but all 27 EU member states if they met the requirements. A veto over the entire EU. Trade fixed helping the Northern Ir Irish economy flow better, as well as importers and exporters suffering from Tory Brexit balls up getting a break. There really wasn't anything bad for Northern Ireland here. 
All the DUP had to do was suck it up, re-enter Stormont, get the assembly up and running and accept their new powers, operating under Sinn Féin then. The DUP were definitely blindsided. They decided to take a little bit of time to ponder all of this, but ultimately the one thing they wanted, the First Minister rollback, was the one thing they didn't get. And in a pretty extreme example of putting party before people, they still turned around and said, no, it is the DUP's favourite word. And now we come back up to date. Just like here, local elections for councils have been held in Northern Ireland too, albeit a bit later, obviously. They literally just happened. And the people of Northern Ireland have handed Sinn Féin another win, much to the DUP's chagrin, no doubt. Sinn Féin has become the largest party in local government for the first time ever in Northern Ireland, increasing its vote share by 7.7%. Largely, it has to be said, at the expense of the Social Democratic and Labour Party, the SDLP, and the Ulster Unionist Party, the UUP, when you look at the headline figures. That's what jumps out at you. So from the non-DUP unionists and what passes for the Labour Party there, albeit a nationalist version of them, the DUP lost a bit of ground, but broadly it stood still. It lost 0.8% of their vote. The equivalent of anti-Tory tactical voting, perhaps? Anti-DUP voting. This is actually a big deal, even though the DUP's numbers didn't actually shift much. Northern Ireland is known for its sectarianism, its tribalism, and indeed its parties are all very tribal. They only see themselves as representatives of their own voters, not all voters. Therefore, the DUP in power is only interested in the needs, wants and desires of unionists. They don't run Northern Ireland in the interests of everybody. If they won, you have to have it their way. This is why power sharing became such a big deal. It forced the Northern Ireland Assembly to be more representative of more of its own people and stop being so tribal. What the DUP have done here is put their tribalism first and foremost on the table again. The people in Northern Ireland seem to have at least in some quarters put their tribalism aside. When you see unionist votes from the UUP and other nationalist votes from the SDLP apparently going to Sinn Féin, it's a clear shot across the bow to the DUP, surely, that if they don't reopen the Stormont Assembly, these results will keep getting replicated. They will be kept out of the top job by democracy. This has never happened before. Are we seeing the beginnings of a change for Northern Irish voter mentality here? Maybe. But just as obviously and importantly is that it's a clear sign they, went, they want functioning government again and are laying the blame for that not happening at the feet of those who very much are to blame for that, the DUP. There is a caveat here, though, and that is despite the DUP basically standing still, gains were made by the smallest of the unionist parties in Northern Ireland, the TUV, traditional unionist voice, for whom the DUP just aren't batshit enough. Yes, there are unionists even more mad than they are. So actually what we've seen here is the most unionist and the most nationalist parties make gains at the expense of let's call them more moderate unionists and nationalists, if you can call the DUP moderate, which seems daft, but compared to the TUV, it's actually not necessarily an exaggeration. The non-sectarian alliance party were the only other party to make gains in these local elections. So you can argue that unionists, nationalists, and non-sectarians are falling in behind certain parties at this point, the largest parties where it comes to the nationalists and non-aligned parties, but the smallest, yet most extreme, are the unionists. So what does that tell us about them? What does that tell us about what's really gone on here? Well, the UUP lost ground, likely not to Sinn Féin, but to the DUP. The DUP then lost ground to the TUB. Some UUP voters might have gone to Sinn Féin instead to punish the DUP, would be my interpretation of this. So not necessarily a section of the Northern Irish population becoming more in sync with the times, but actually becoming ever more unionist and more extremist with it. The DUP functionally only lost vote share, not seats. So it's a weird one. And this is how I conclude things have worked out. Although Sinn Féin are now the largest party, won seats, etc., they've done so largely at the expense, I think, of the SDLP and smaller parties like the Greens, People Before Profit, AIM2, and if the unionists are going to continue to drift rightwards, as they basically are, they're going towards the DUP. And they really are tiny. It'd take a seismic shift from the DUP to the TUB for them to gain prominence, which I don't reckon will happen. But what this does show is instability within unionist politics. And Sinn Féin, actually, when they're saying we need to get things back on the road, this unionist nonsense is failing Northern Ireland, they're being proven absolutely right. And they need to do absolutely nothing but let their rivals eat themselves, which they are obligingly so doing. Now, the DUP's chief headbanger, Jeffrey Donaldson, is at least passingly acquainted with reality enough to acknowledge this should be a 
wake up call to his party. But if they really want to prove that they need to get Stormont open, the writing is on the wall. The more they refuse to do their jobs, the more voters are getting pissed off at them. Well, what took you so long to twig that voters, heaven forfend, elect you to actually work for a living? Get your fingers out, get Stormont reopened, and your jobs, as is being demanded of you. You came second last year. You came second fiddle again this year. Carry on the way you are. You deserve to slide further. There's new powers. Getting Stormont running again can see the benefits of trade easing. They have a bit of clout with the EU if needed, certain circumstances, obviously. But the alternative is things continuing in the direction of travel Sinn Féin wants and Irish reunification on the horizon. Donaldson's problem is even if he can see the writing on the wall, too many in his own party resolutely don't or won't. Will Stormont get back to work? I'm struggling to see it in, me, in the immediate future. The DUP at this point, at least Donaldson's end of it, know they need to get back in. But how, without looking more ridiculous than they already do, is the problem. UK government intervention as a face-saving exercise might work if they can come up with a cunning plan. But if power sharing is essential to keeping the peace and the second party refuses to do that because they're no longer the first party, at the end of the day, well, how can you force it? Sinn Féin are the ultimate beneficiaries of all of this mess. I've got no beef with Irish reunification at all. Shake off the shackles of UK oversight. You can blame them. I don't blame Scotland for wanting to go that way should they choose to as well. I'm not going to be a hypocrite over Northern Ireland on that score either. Northern Ireland continues not to function. I fear it will continue not to function. It will be the DUP continuing to be the cause of that. To many of their people, they will look at these results as well. This will do and continue to dig their heels in. Public services, meanwhile, will continue to crumble. Austerity is still happening there. All the important legislative decisions are being made in Westminster now. Sinn Féin will be smiling about all of this on the quiet, I'm sure. They had a good result, no argument there. But not really at the expense of the DUP this time around when you look at the numbers. To get an idea of what the DUP are holding up right now, after you've liked, shared and subscribed in your appreciation of the hard work and research that has gone into this, the making of this crackpot take on some crazy politics and knowing you can't wait for further installments, which will be winging their way to you on a daily basis. You can see how we covered Rishi Sunak's Windsor Framework Agreement in more detail by clicking on the video here, which will explain all and give an indication of just how mad the DUP are to just not get back to their desks, get on with their jobs. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, folks.